Okay, so if you haven't seen it yet, this is a continuation of the video of me working on my buddy's lawn. So you can click right up here. Just go ahead and click right up there. If you haven't seen that, we are going to do his soil test, send that off to a lab, but uh, I've got to get something before I can do that. And so we're, we're going to go get some necessary supplies. Let's do it. That's an upcoming project, so make sure you're subscribed. There's so much going on this summer. You gotta be a part of it. Click it, click it. Click, click, click. I don't know about you guys, but it's been hard for me to find ink for, well, it is a really old printer. So today it was either find ink or, you know, uh, get a new printer, which, that doesn't matter. Let's go do the rest of this stuff. Okay. So before I do any applications today, I am going to go ahead and take some soil samples. I'm going to put them in this bucket, then I'm going to mix it around, and I'm going to put it into a bag, and I'm going to send that off. So I'm doing that so I can get a further plan than what we have for just today, which is get some in down, get this thing growing, um, work a little bit on the spots so that we can get those ready to grow, and do a little flood work on that salted area. So. Those are the main goals for today, but I want to make sure I get some soil in here before anything goes down and we'll be able to take a look at this in a week or so. Okay, so I went through and basically sampled around a four to five inch depth. Um, I've got some pretty good looking soil here. And this was actually brought in. Um, so I know it's gonna be in pretty good shape. Well, the reason I knew that this was gonna be good soil is, well, kind of a lot of the stuff around here in this basin in Summit County, we just have a lot of phosphorus in the ground naturally occurring, a lot of potassium in the soil naturally occurring. And because most of the areas that are getting built are on these either above wetlands or sort of in the foothills of some of the mountains, there's an awful lot of topsoil just because it has been sitting here. Now, it may not look like that from what's behind me right here because there's so much rock back there, but this soil is extremely fertile. And if you take a look at this video, I did a test that showed what was happening in my lawn that I'd been tending for and what was on the hillside because when I built this area up I pulled a lot of soil from back here anything I could find and just sort of used it to level out this area of lawn so down at Boomer's lawn he's got a similar situation right this is a uh, screen topsoil that's come in from local builds around here and so naturally it's going to have some high level of macronutrients I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this into a bag a really high-tech one because I forgot to get a good one it just so happens to be right here. This is the Walmart sampling bag. When I get back home, I'll change it into something a little more secure. And uh, I'm probably not gonna end up using all of this because some I just dumped out on the ground. But I wanna just keep this off to the side for now. And then we can come back to it, send it to the lab, um, and see what we've got here to work with to get the season started. Okay, so here's how you go about doing a soil test. Now, I chose Ward Laboratories. Again, you've seen them in my videos before because I've used them for many, many years. When we were out in Kearney, Nebraska, they were the lab that we sent everything to. All of our fertilizer analysis, any soil analysis from any trials that we were running in fields, you name it, they could do it all. And last year, I actually ran one on uh, the soil life as well because I found that to be pretty interesting to see what was happening inside of my own lawn that I've been caring for. So that's the reason why I chose Ward. I just think that they do a great, easy to read test. It's very simple, gives you all the information you need. This is all you need in order to make this happen. First, collect your soil sample. If you do a small sandwich bag or a Ziploc bag uh, with your soil in it mixed together like I showed earlier, take that, put it into an envelope or into a US Postal Service priority box, either way you wanna do it. 
you would go to their website and print out the S5 test. That's the test I'm about to show you because it gives you just a wonderful look at everything in the soil so that you can make your plan. So it only took a couple of days and it was emailed back to me so that I had it and it was pretty easy to say, well, this FERC plan going forward is gonna be pretty dang simple. Let's take a look at that real quick. So you can see there's a few things going on here. Number one, the pH is high, but it's not high because of any other reason than our natural soil makeup. The soil here is just high in pH. Initially in my own lawn, I had a pH that was almost identical to this, and over time it trended downward a little bit without any other sort of correction by putting any sulfur or citric acid or anything else. It was just sort of the natural buildup of organic matter began to give it a little bit more of an acidifying effect. So seeing his at a 7.8 is not shocking and we're not gonna do anything to change that. However, in one of my previous videos, somebody asked about putting gypsum on the dog spots. If I were to look over at where the calcium levels were here in the soil, that's nothing that I really wanna put out there. So this is one that I'm glad I didn't do it. I'm glad I just did the deep watering technique and honestly that grass is filling in very, very well. So you can see also on here the phosphorus level is decent and there will definitely be some used out of the soil and that will be something that will need to get corrected here probably next season. But it's in good shape for this year and I'm not going to do anything to add to that. The potassium levels are extremely high and again, not going to need to add any of that this year either. We're kind of moving along in a good direction. Most of this isn't really going to require any sort of correction and even going out to the base saturations of potassium, calcium, magnesium, you don't see anything out of whack. So I really have a good soil that I can work with here and sort of shape and move along in the way that I'd like it. This has an organic matter level of 3.6%, and again, that is wonderful, and I'm going to try to trend that upward. Again, with mine, it started out at the same level, and by the time it was all over, it was somewhere around a 4.3 to 4.4, so it had a nice increase over time as more rooting matter built up and decayed, and, and the soil just got more healthy. Now, if you take a look at the nitrogen recommendations that are on here, it's only recommending 100 pounds per acre for the course of the season. And it says to split that up into four applications, which is only 25 pounds per time, four times a year per acre. It's a little over a half a pound. So really we're looking at something that's somewhere around 2.25 pounds total for the season, which is in general what I would recommend for a standard maintenance lawn anyway. So we're going to stick to that plan, knowing that it's already had one full pound. This test does not take that into account. I'm gonna tell you the lawn responded really well, but you don't get to see it yet. So make sure you're subscribed to see what's going to happen because I think you're really gonna like it. Now here's the plan going forward. Because I don't really need to do a whole lot of other correction to this thing, I'm not going to do a pH correction. I'm not going to do any other sort of minor nutrient. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to basically run it on a very simple monthly liquid plan. And we're gonna go ahead and run the green punch out there all season because why not? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the full rate of that. I'm gonna send it across the lawn every month until the end of the year. And you say every month, it seems like your growing season is really short. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna hit it again in about two weeks because it will have been almost four weeks since the initial application by that time. And then I'll do it again four weeks after that, four weeks after that, and four weeks after that, and pretty much we'll be into the time where it's gonna start snowing again, which is odd because it hasn't actually stopped snowing. There's nothing really super exciting about this particular soil test, except that we're in good shape and we know where to start and we know how we're gonna go through the season. So this is a great candidate for just running liquid applications from here on out the rest of the year. Now this one will get biostims on the rest of the year as well. I'll continue to give it RGS, ARA, Humic all through the season. And you know, if I feel like it and it looks like it needs a kick to make it darker, we'll go ahead and spray some iron out as well. But I have a feeling with just getting that initial balance, getting the shot out there, making everything go straight out of the gate, that we're going to be on the right track and it's going to be moving forward really well. So there's links in the description below to Ward Labs, how you would go about getting your soil sample if you wanted to send it in. And if you needed help with something like this because you can't quite understand, that is available. You can go to shop.loncology.com. I do those for people and I'd be more than happy to help you with your season plan. So we're going to keep rolling, check in on the next video, because I think you're going to like what you're seeing. I'll talk to you real soon.